So in this video, let's talk about the reasons for having separation joints in welding. Sometimes joints are unavoidable in a building, but there are situations where the joints can be avoided as well. So let us categorize the different kinds of joints. The most important one being the expansion joint. Now, as the name suggests, expansion joint is provided in a building for expansion reasons. So now there are a lot of guidelines for this expansion joint in IS 456 and you can refer to the clauses and the codes which I have mentioned in this particular blog. So clause 27.1 in IS 456 is an important clause related to expansion joint. Now one point you can note is that an expansion joint is a separation joint and there are many other kinds of separation joints as well in a structure that we might need from time to time. Expansion joint is purely based on the requirement of controlling expansion and the materials that we use in a building being very weak in tension cannot take this expansion and it cracks up. So in order to release this additional stresses developed, we provide the joint so that the expansion, the stresses are relieved in that joint. So that's what an expansion joint does. Now I suggest you read the blog along with seeing the video because both together will make it complete. So here I have mentioned the most important points in clause 27.1 in IS 456. It says that expansion joint shall be provided where the buildings have an abrupt change in plan. So that's one condition. Joint shall be preferably supported on separate columns. Joints can be on same foundation. Now the logic for that is that the foundation is a buried structure. It's under the earth. So it's not subjected to expansion or direct sunlight so it's not going to expand so you can have the foundation same across the structure but then ideally it should be on different columns and beam structure so that's what the code suggests i will just explain this with a few sketches so that everyone is clear about now the first point says that where there is an abrupt change in the plan so if it's something like this Code says ideally you give a joint somewhere here to make it two different buildings. So your analysis also will be like that. You will have two separate buildings. This will be building one. This will be building two. And you analyze this and analyze this separately and you get your analysis result. And it's two different entirely different building. The code also says that joints shall be preferably on separate columns so what it means is if you have a structure like this give a column here give a column here and give a column here so you will have a beam also here a beam also here so if i cut a section it would look something like this so this is what code says so this will be filled with a resilient material all that we can discuss later so this is not part of this blog how that uh, will be filled and all that you can refer different codes for that i will mention the code reference here so here you will have a in the corners you have different columns as well so it warns the code suggests that preferably this can be done but at times when there are problems where you cannot give a column it is sometimes okay to cantilever the beam and without columns you can provide that so it will be just a beam separation like this there are no columns in there it is not essential code suggests preferably same way sometimes you will cantilever two slabs as well say for example you have your slab cantilevering like this a joint in the slab so that is also possible but code suggests preferably you have to do it on a beam and you should also have columns separate columns for that now code says the foundation can be common it need not be two different foundation it can be a single foundation so generally your buried structure is not supposed to have separation between that only the superstructure will have the joint the foundation can be same reinforcement shall not extend across the joint and 
and the break shall be complete basically the structure needs to be two different independent structures you cannot have the reinforcement in the slab or beam or anything connecting each other because that will make the structure single so it's very important you don't have any kind of interaction between the structures it should be two different structures now code says if you are building the building length is more than 45 meters preferably have one or more joint you can read this close to have a full understanding but many times it is difficult to have joints at 45 meters because functionally it will be a problem durability point of view it can create leaks and create issues clients and architects very often recommends not to have expansion joint now expansion joint can be avoided provided you accommodate the stresses developed due to the expansion so this can be done by a temperature load analysis which you can easily do in etabs and design for the additional stresses you can provide additional reinforcement it may not be too huge a difference but it needs to be looked into so there are ways that you can do it we will cover that in a different video not in this video but just understand that temperature load analysis is possible in etabs and many other softwares as well now i suggest you also go through is3414 which gives design considerations for expansion joints and also guidelines for locating and various things so i'll just have a quick look at the code so here it gives you coefficient of thermal expansion and it gives you at what interval you have to give the joint so code is 456 told you 45 meters now if you come here and look it tells you 30 meters for frames it says 30 meter so there are more stringent requirement in this particular code so it might be sometimes practically not possible so it may be better you accommodate the expansion than pro provision many times in my experience i have seen that 50 meter 60 meter buildings aren't expanding and creating cracks and issues so it would be a good idea to do a temperature load analysis because it doesn't considerably increase your steel if your lengths are of this range so it could be a better solution expansion is only one among the many criteria for having joints and now there are other requirement like structural geometric irregularity now it's always good to keep your building really simple as much as possible because if you have an irregular shape something like again something like l-shaped or something like say you have a building like this now the problem is this is irregular now earlier we were talking about expansion reasons which can be avoided but here now we are talking about irregularity so we have to separate this building into two different buildings for making it regular now what is the problem if your building is irregular i have time and again explained it in various videos and in various blogs now i'll repeat it once more for your benefit so here if you have ground moving here now due to seismic activity your structure will interact say if you have a column here and if you have a column here everything is tied together by beams and slabs so the load path will take a bent path wherein the interaction will be like this whereas in a regular building it will be a straight path so here this is a kind of concave shaped building so what happens is your first mode of vibration could be torsion and torsion is critical because it's going to create brittle failure in your structure so to avoid torsion it would be a good idea to split your building into two again so here the requirement is not expansion but to reduce the torsion in your building or to nullify the torsional effects in your building now many engineers do accommodate torsion as well in the design sometimes it's not practically possible nowadays with the complicated shapes and forms to eliminate complete torsion but then it would be a good idea to keep your building simple so this is another reason for having a separation joint so here the reason is not expansion but to make the building regular
same way mass irregularity even if you have a straight building a single building but say you have two portions say here you have 10 floors and here you have one floor then it's ideally separated by a joint again the reasons making it regular in mass and also to avoid differential settlement so that's another reason that you have to give a join in your building same way again if you are adding a building to an existing building then it's always better to have let me conclude by mentioning the requirement of the gap or the sizing of that gap so is3414 gives you a lot of things about what ceiling compound to be used what uh, is the thermal expansion coefficient of various materials so based on all this you can decide the gap between the building that is only for expansion reasons but more important is your structural reason when you have a tall building when you provide joint in your building there is a possibility that say you have one building and you have another building and there is a possibility that this building in elevation i'm drawing now can deflect this way and the other building can deflect in this way and both pound each other and it can create critical failure of your building so to avoid that is 1893 tells you a very important clause here which i think is amended but for but this clause is not amended so i will tell you that seven eleven three two adjacent buildings or two adjacent units of the same building with separation join between them shall be separated by a distance equal to r times sum of the story displacements so what it means is this gap if this building is deflecting delta one and if this building is deflecting by delta two the maximum displacement and the gap should be r multiplied by delta one plus delta two so that it doesn't hit each other so that's the condition set by the code and r is your response reduction factor which is either three or five generally based on your structure is ductile or non-ductile in your analysis and in your considerations so this decides the gap sometimes you will get a larger gap sometimes you get a smaller gap based on this particular criteria so this is all i wanted to mention in this particular video i suggest you read the blog as well because there is more information in the blog i have given references and i might have mentioned a bit more points in the blog and i'll be following this up with more videos on this topic and temperature load analysis later thank you for your time